So in the last video we had some practice with combinatorial circuits. So next few videos we will have a look at some of the important sequential circuits. So in this video we are going to look at something called timers. Okay. So as the name indicates, timers are circuits which are generated for usually measuring time or generating some timing events, something like that. So in many cases uh, we need a notion of time in our circuits also physical time what i mean okay so let's build some simpler circuit so what i need is uh, i need a circuit okay and it has one output basically an led and it should blink the led okay blink once every second let's say that means every second for half second LED is on and half second LED is off. So this is the circuit I want. Now as you know if you want to turn on the LED you will have to make this output high. If you want to keep it off just make the output low. Now generally uh, the circuits which need to measure these times they will have a reference clock signal. So in the previous designs also we have used a clock signal which is nothing but a continuous square wave. Usually that clock is supplied by a crystal based oscillator. So if if this is your chip, this is some IC scan, this can be FPGA or SIG whatever. We usually have a crystal sitting outside. This is my crystal uh, which will be providing this clock signals okay so depending upon the resonance frequency of the crystal we will get different kind of frequency but one particular crystal will be always giving one fixed frequency uh, in our example let's say like this is providing 100 megahertz clock okay so the square wave that is provided by this guy is running at 100 megahertz now you cannot directly connect 100 megahertz to an led yeah, of course you can connect uh, but the problem is the LED blinks so fast that you'll feel like it's always on. So that doesn't make sense. So from this 100 megahertz clock, I will have to generate something which will turn the LED on and off for half second each. So what we can do, actually we can generate another square wave like this. Since we need to continuously turn it on and off. And the period of this new square wave it can be one second with 50% duty cycle. That means this is half second and this is half second. So if we drive this square wave on this line, it will feel like LED is turning on for half second and it is turning off for half second. So the technique that we are going to use is we already have a reference clock signal uh, at 100 megahertz. That means our period is right one by 100 megahertz that is 10 nanosecond so we have a measure of 10 nanoseconds so if you look at this input clock it is also a square wave and its period is only 10 nanosecond now what i can do is i can count how many of these square waves how many of these clock cycles have elapsed based on that i can have a measure of time so if one cycle is elapsed that is 10 if two cycles are elapsed 20 three cycles are elapsed 30 so and so forth so like that i can measure so using that technique uh, i can measure half second so you can calculate how many clock cycles you need to get half second so we have 0.5 second uh, divided by 10 nanosecond which is 0 0.05 into 10 to the power of 9 which we can write as 5 times 10 to the power of 7 cycles. Okay, so once these many clock cycles have elapsed, I know half second has elapsed. So what I can do is I can take some signal and keep it high and keep it high as long as these many input clock cycles elapse. Then I can make it low. Then again keep it low as long as these many clock cycles have elapsed. Again make the signal high. So that's what I can do. So basically we need some circuit to measure these many cycles and 
that is what we are going to call as time one the circuit which does this measurement or this basic counting that is what we call as a time one so basically it's nothing but a counter okay in the next tutorial we are going to look at counter and you will find like basically timers and counters are nothing but uh, similar circuits so how that circuit will look like so let's uh, revise our requirement my requirement is uh, i need to count the clock cycles so once first clock cycle elapses uh, i will have some circuit uh, it sure it should have value 1 then second it should have value 2 then it should have value 3 so on and so forth so basically after each clock cycle i need to increment it by 1 so if you want to increment something by 1 we need an adder circuit so you know it is adder circuit and we are incrementing it by 1 so these are the two inputs to the adder okay one is constant 1 what should be the other value the other value should be the previous sum so if previously it was 5 this time we need 5 plus 1 next time we need 5 plus 2 so on and so forth uh, but what is the requirement? This addition should happen only on a clock edge. Otherwise, if you just connect it back, this is a pure combination circuit uh, which doesn't make any sense. This we call as a combinational loop. In a combinational circuit, you are taking an output and connecting to input. Uh, that's a very bad design practice. Okay. What will be the output? We can't even predict. So it shouldn't continuously happen. This addition should happen only on the clock edge. So what we need to the output of this adder, so it's a bunch of uh, bits here, we will connect flip-flops. Again, depending upon how many wires are here, we need those many flip-flops. And the output of these flip-flops are looped back here. And this flip-flop will be running on our input clock. So let's see what is going to happen. Suppose at some point of time the output of this flip-flop is 100 assume so this 100 plus 1 Here what will come? 101 so 100 is the output of flip-flop 101 is the input to the flip-flop Whether this 101 will immediately come here? No 101 will come here only on the next clock edge So in the next clock edge this will become 101 and because of loop this will become 102 and it will wait for the next clock cycle so this keeps on repeating until what condition until our overflow happens okay so the result after addition when overflow happens it will overflow to zero again let's take a simple example instead of 100 let's say i have this adder flip-flop let's say this is three bits okay? three bits so there are three bits let me draw in detail so that things are clear so we have an adder, it has 3 bit output. So each output will be connected to a flip flop. Flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. So these 3 bits are fed back to the adder. Okay, so these are the output from this flip flop. Now, here you will see the input to the adder is 3 bits here, 1 bit here, but the output is only 3 bit. So, at some point of time, definitely overflow will happen. The largest number that you can have here is 111, which is 7. So, 7 will come here. When you do 7 plus 1, it will be 81000. But we don't have anything else to save this carry. That's what we call as an overflow. So effectively the output here will become zero so next time it will be zero plus one right yeah so at some point let's assume uh, the output from the adder is zero zero say one this is the output from the adder on the next clock edge this zero zero one will come as the output of flip flop that is fed back to the adder to that you are adding one so this one will become two we'll get zero one zero and that is staying at the input of the flip-flop but it will go to the output only on the next clock edge okay so on the next clock edge this will come here and that will fed back and you will add one to that so on and so forth okay so from where we can take the output of this circuit you can take it either from the output of the adder 
or from the output of the fifth floor both are fine so this is our final output 3 bit and my claim is this output will increment by 1 on every clock edge from 0 to 7 after that it will overflow it will roll back to 0 and it will continue to go from uh, 0 to 7 so and then so forth so this is basically a timer so a timer will usually have a bunch of flip-flops and adder or subtractor depends whether you want to count up or count down here we are talking about count up i am incrementing on each clock we can have a counter uh, down count also right you start from a bigger number and after each count after each clock you will decrement it in that case you will have a subtractor here instead of an adder but of course adders and subtractors in digital uh, they are more or less same circuit right so a bunch of circuits and adder that's and a loop back like this that's what constitutes a timer and again uh, sometimes on every clock you don't want to increment by one you may want to increment by two depends on what we want to decide okay. so let's come back to our original design here so my aim is to count until this value okay so once i reach this value that means half seconds have elapsed i can toggle my output if output was one i can make it zero or if it was zero i can make it one and i need to start counting again from zero and again count these many cycles so that's what my aim so see where your count value is finally stored the count value is finally stored on the flip-flop so here i took three flip-flop because i wanted to count only till seven in this particular case i want to count till this value so how many flip-flops you need you need a uh, more number of flip-flops right uh, so how, how will you find it out so the number of flip-flops is minimum number of flip-flops that you need is log to the base 2 max timer value okay so that will tell you how many flip-flops you need so let's see So in decimal we need 1 followed by 7, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in decimal. So this is binary equivalent 1. So how many you need? 26. You need 26 flip flops. So here you will have 26 flip flops. The output from this arrow will be 26. The input to the arrow will be also 26. But this will be still 1 bit wide because you want to store only 1. Now let's look at the code. So let me simply call it as LED blinker. LED blinker. The input is let me call it I clock input 100 megahertz clock and the output let's call it LED itself. This will be finally connected to a real LED that will be coming from an always block. We will change it when we actually drive it. Fine this is fine now let's design our timer now the thing is when you start your circuit we need a reference initial value from where we want to start uh, counting right so we usually start from zero and if anything goes wrong we want to restart from zero itself so for that purpose we will need a reset also so let's put input i reset this is my reset signal so physically where those resets will be connected we will connect those resets to the flip-flops so that when i press the reset button all the flip-flop outputs become zero irrespective of what is the output here right okay so that we can write so i can simply write always at post such i clock or post such i reset i'm using asynchronous reset I can say if I reset, if reset happens, okay, let me simply write here counter or timer value. We call it timer. Timer value is zero. So which is the timer value here? That is nothing but the output of this flip-flop. So this output, all of them together, that's what we're calling as the timer value. So we need to declare it. 
so this is something new we are going to see uh, you need 26 flip-flops right so previously uh, when you have more than one bit we used to declare them in the input output now these flip-flops are internal to a circuit so we have to declare them internally and they are also on the left hand side of always block so they should be declared as reg so reg timer value is it one bit no how many bits we need we already calculated we need 26 bit so we need to declare it as 25 down to 0 timer value so if reset is there timer value is 0 else what should happen that is on the every clock edge what should happen we can say timer value should increment timer value is timer value plus one tick b1 so now you can imagine what is representing this one timer value plus one this is on the right hand side so that will be implemented as a combination circuit which is that circuit that is this circuit this adder timer plus one right that is this combination circuit on the left hand side it is timer value so that should be the output of a bunch of flip-flops so who is there this guy so this is timer value that is going to this one now is it good enough okay so remember my requirement is i need to count till this value after that i need to restart counting from zero then only i will get exactly 0.5 delay so if you simply write like this till what value timer value will go timer value won't stop at this and go back to zero because this is not the maximum value that can be represented using 26 bits right so using 26 bits let's see two to the power of 26 maximum value is two to the power of 26 minus one you know minus one this is the largest value okay this is some 6.7 times 10 to the power of 7 but we want to go only till this much but of course if you take 25 you can't reach this value that's why we are forced to take 26 flip flop but if you simply keep on incrementing it will go till this value and that is not half second this one if you convert you will see like this is same as 6.7 second so it will be on for 6.7 second and it will be off for 6.7 second if, if if you want simply to blink it that is good enough but uh, later we will see a real design example so we have to control the timing up to few nanoseconds so that matters okay so our requirement is we want to go only till this one and after that we need to reset the timer back to zero so here this simple else is not enough we will say like else if timer value if it is less than the value that we need that is this one 5 10 to out of 7 so 5 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 we will increment it else else means when it will happen when the timer reaches this value we will make it zero. How many bits? 26 bits decimal zero. This is also 26 bits decimal zero. Good enough. So this makes the actual timer. This is our timer. Now we can simply drive the LED. So so again, this is new in this code. In all our previous code we had a single always block so here also you can do everything with single always block but we will use multiple always block in most of the coding and each always block will be representing some logical part for example this timer is a logical unit one independent unit so we will use one always block to represent that now this led this output is another logical unit okay so we will use a separate always block to represent this output value you can use the same always block there is no syntax error 
but it is a good coding practice like in software uh, we follow divide and conquer approach instead of writing everything inside a single always block and confusing uh, we logically separate them into different parts okay so always at for such i clock or for such i reset i'm separating it and i am saying like if i press the reset i will make this led uh, zero that is one bit okay one tick be zero else that means if there is no reset what should i do i should toggle this led the state of this led should be toggled if it was one it should become zero if it was zero it should become one whenever my timer overflows okay so how can i write it else this else representing if there is no reason under that another if if timer value equals this value i will toggle this led so we can write led is not of led you can either write tilde led or you can write not of led both are fine let's write tilde led and it should be declared as a reg type okay so initially it was zero when timer reaches this value we will toggle the led now remember for how many clock cycles timer will have this value it will have this value only for one clock cycle so as long as timer value is less than this one we are incrementing it and on the clock when the timer value will become this timer will be reset to zero okay so on that clock this led will be toggled so you will feel like led blinked now how that full circuit will look like so we will still have our timer then the output of this timer you are comparing so you will have a comparator one output is from here what is the other input to the ground comparator in this case this is the other input okay this value so one two three four five six seven and the comparator output comes so what we wrote if the comparator output is true if it is one led should toggle so how can we represent it so look at the code once again here it's written led not led led is on the left hand side of assignment operator here that means led is the output of a flip-flop so you will have a flip-flop somewhere okay his output is led and what is the input to the flip-flop input to the flip-flop is as long as comparator output is false the state of led should not change when the comparator output becomes true this should be negative of the previous value so what we need we need a mux actually so we will have a mux here and if comparator output is zero let me connect it here that means the comparator is acting as the control signal to the mux so if it is zero what will get fed to the flip-flop flip-flop the previous value itself if it is true if it is one we need to toggle it so what should get come connected here this one with a not gate okay so this is an arrow this is a not gate okay don't get confused so let me redraw so if it is zero this gets connected here if it is one we have a not gate is not of LED that should come here so in the next clock this this negated one will come as the output so this is that entire circuit that we designed only difference is here instead of three flip-flops there will be 26 flip-flops and this is 26 there are 26 flip-flops and that is representing this entire thing okay so let's simulate once and see Let's call it again just blinker all 
Okay, so there's an in syntax error. Uh, like our curly bracket begin end for this else, I missed the begin end for all this block. Okay. Okay, that is fine. We can simulate now. Need blinker. So I set running at 100 megahertz. So so when I say clock here, uh, it is 10 nanosecond. And let's make the reset high initially. Uh, let's run for say 100 nanosecond here. So each press 10 clocks will go. So this is the timer value. You can see because of reset it is stuck at zero. Once I remove the reset, zero. And if you run, you can see the timer is incrementing. It's becoming one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Like that. So if you want the simulation to continuously run, instead of this, you can click this one, run all. That means simulation will keep on running. And you can see the waveform it keeps on progressing. But still, you'll find like at this speed, to reach that value, five followed by seven zeros, it might take several hours to finish simulation. Okay, so that depends upon how fast your computer is, one thing. If you want to stop in between, you can click stop here. Uh, or you can just say continue on. Ideally, we should be able to see the progress. I don't know why computer is not showing. That way automatically progressing, you have to press zoom in zoom out to see it okay so this is this one okay so we'll fast forward and uh, we'll show you you can see our timer value it reached this value so remember on this clock edge value is still 499999 after the clock edge it is 5 followed by 70 so on this clock edge the logic detector the comparator detected like the timer value is this one so he toggled the LED value so it was 0 from there it became 1 and you can see the timer it became 0 also so who did that that is done by this logic okay so he made the timer back to 0 because it's this value so when this value reached two things happened the timer was reset to 0 and the LED toggled and both of them happen together okay so this is why we say like hardware is concurrent both happened at the same time if you are doing this in software uh, you can either make led toggle or you can reset the timer you cannot do both at the same time instance okay so each always block here you can say is running in parallel each always block is concurrent that's how you should view it so these are parallel things this always block and this always block they are running in parallel in simulation in actual implementation they are representing two different logical blocks of your hardware okay so more details about uh, what happens if you have many always block we'll discuss in the next tutorial that's an important topic on multiple drives so in the waveform you can see exactly when the led toggle it toggled at uh, this point okay this many picosecond so if you convert it into seconds this will be 0 0.5 0, 0, 0. there is some extra 3 1 here uh, that is coming because initially we had some reset right we applied a reset and we removed reset after that much time so that's why that additional uh, time is there because the time in the wave window uh, it is showing from from simulation time zero so at the beginning zero like that so if you keep on running you will see after another 0.5 second led will toggle again here you can see so here he toggled at this time exactly after 0.5 this is one second point he toggled again again 
1.5 he toggled again and the 2 he toggled again so and so forth so our logic is working if you physically connect this line to an led you will see like it is blinking uh, once every half second or it will it will turn on for 0.5 second and turn off for 0.5 second so more details we will discuss in the next tutorial